Disappearance of Emma Filipov. Emma Filipov was born on January 6, 1986. She's the second of four children to parents James and Shelley Filipov. Emma grew up in a small, rural town located 18 kilometers northwest of Perth, Ontario, Canada. Her mother a schoolteacher and her father an artist. Emma would be described as sharing a personality closer to that of her father's later in life. Beginning in her childhood, those closest to Emma thought of her as a somewhat shy person with a hidden creative side. Growing up, her creative energy would continue to evolve into interests such as photography, poetry, and the culinary arts, with many of her friends and family describing her as both gifted and talented. Like most families, life was not always perfect in the Filipov home. At the age of 16, Emma would move out of the family home and drop out of high school. She would eventually acquire her GED, reconnect with her family, and earn a diploma in photojournalism. At 18, Emma would leave Ontario to teach overseas. She spent one year teaching English in Shenzhen, China, before returning to Canada. Over the next several years, she would work various jobs in Perth as she prepared for the next chapter of her life. It had long been her goal to move 4,700 kilometers west to British Columbia, a Canadian province often associated with free-spirited and creative people. In 2011, a 25-year-old Emma would finally purchase a bus ticket to make her goal a reality. After spending one last summer in Perth, she moved to Victoria, BC in the fall. Upon her arrival, a longtime friend of Emma's opened the door to her home, allowing Emma to live with her until she got on her feet. However, this was only a temporary situation, foreshadowing the living arrangements that would continue throughout Emma's time in Victoria. It appears as though Emma never had a permanent fixed address in Victoria. Friends and acquaintances have described her living a nomadic lifestyle, spending most of her free time outside, temporarily living with friends, living on a houseboat, sleeping in trees, and eventually staying periodically at Sandy Merriman House, a women's shelter located in Victoria. Despite her ever-changing living accommodations, Emma found seasonal employment as a chef at Redfish Bluefish, a seafood restaurant in Victoria's Inner Harbor. As mentioned, Emma spent one last summer in Perth before moving to Victoria. It was during this time that she met Julian Huard at an art show. After striking up a conversation, the two would soon realize that they shared many of the same interests. Throughout the summer of 2011, Emma and Julian would spend time together, talking and taking walks. As they spent more time together, the intimacy of their conversations grew leading to stronger feelings than that of friendship alone. Having already purchased her ticket to Victoria, Emma decided that a romantic relationship was not a fit for her life at that time. She informed Julian that she preferred that they no longer see each other. Julian made several attempts to re-establish communication with Emma that were ultimately unsuccessful. Emma would begin her new life in Victoria with Julian staying in Perth. However, the two would meet again, as Julian would soon move to Victoria as well. Julian has stated that his decision to move to Victoria was based on his passion for outdoor sports and nature. He claims he was unaware that the city of Victoria was Emma's destination within the province of British Columbia, and that his arrival there was nothing more than a coincidence. Before Emma's disappearance, Julian has said to have met her in downtown Victoria, where she was seemingly in good spirits. Described as a chance encounter, the two had a brief conversation before parting ways. Without any contact information, Julian reached out to Emma's father through Facebook with hopes of inviting Emma to a concert. Again, his attempt to establish communication with Emma proved unsuccessful. Julian last spoke to Emma the day before or the day of her disappearance. He stated, that she was waiting near a bus stop with a worried expression on her face. He asked her if she was okay, 
but she was not talkative, often nodding her head or giving one-word answers as replies to his questions. He then said goodbye and boarded a city bus. This would be the last time Julian confirms he saw Emma. After Emma's disappearance, he would befriend her mother, Shelley, at Victoria's public library and assist in the search efforts to locate Emma. It is important to note that Julian has been cleared of any wrongdoing by the Victoria police. He has agreed to several police interviews and passed a polygraph test. The decision to include Julian in this video is to illustrate the complications of this case and how many questions remain. We do not suggest that Julian is a suspect or guilty of any crime. As you will see, Julian's story is just one of the many facets of this case that have left investigators and the public baffled by Emma's disappearance. Julian's description of Emma near the bus stop corroborates the accounts given by several of her friends and acquaintances prior to her being reported missing. Despite an agreement with her employer, Redfish Bluefish, to return to work after the winter closure, Emma was frequently contacting her mother to make plans to move back to her family home in Ontario. She would call, asking for help, but quickly call again, reassuring her mother that she was okay and would make the arrangements to move home by herself. After going back and forth on her requests for her mother's help and sensing something wasn't right, Shelley Philippoff decided to fly to Victoria without informing Emma that she was on her way to help her daughter move home. Others have also described Emma as exhibiting strange behavior before she disappeared. Her diet consisted of only water, popcorn, and fish. She would obsess over the autumn leaves on the ground and display signs of paranoia. On November 23rd, just five days before she went missing, the local YMCA security cameras recorded Emma entering and exiting several times as if she was concerned someone was following or watching her. Eventually, her mother would come to find out that she was living in a women's shelter and that the staff was growing concerned as Emma had moved the furniture outside of the building as she had come to believe the furniture was talking to her. These accounts indicate that there is a high likelihood that Emma was experiencing an undiagnosed mental breakdown or disorder. An important factor when considering the possibilities of this case and what may have happened to Emma Filipov. The last confirmed sighting of Emma was on November 28, 2012. That day, she was captured on security footage at a 7-Eleven on Government Street. Emma can be seen purchasing a prepaid cell phone. Similar to the YMCA footage, Emma can once again be seen hesitating before exiting the store. Once again, cautiously looking through the window from inside the store. Emma would return to the same 7-Eleven location to make another purchase, this time for a $200 prepaid credit card before returning to the women's shelter, Sandy Merriman House. It's suspected that she may have become aware of her mother's pending arrival and left the women's shelter at approximately 6 p.m. that evening. Emma then hailed a taxi and asked to be driven to the Victoria International Airport. Despite having over $1,000 in her savings account and a $200 prepaid credit card, Emma claimed she did not have the funds to pay for the fare. She then asked the taxi driver to take her around the block and let her sit and wait inside the taxi for a short time. The driver has stated that Emma had asked him why his dispatch radio was talking, another potential indicator that she was most likely experiencing a mental health issue. Soon after exiting the taxi, Emma was witnessed walking barefoot in front of the Empress Hotel. The witness was an acquaintance of Emma's who proceeded to call 911 to report the unusual behavior out of concern that she may be in need of assistance. Victoria Police soon arrived and interviewed Emma for approximately 45 minutes, 
ultimately determining that she posed no danger to herself or others. At 8 p.m., Emma was released by the police. Three hours later, Shelley Filipov arrived at Sandy Merriman House, only to learn that her daughter had left just five hours earlier. Within an hour of her arrival, Shelley filed a missing person report with Victoria Police. All leads and evidence that are no longer pertinent to the case will not be discussed in this video, as investigators have dismissed hundreds of leads since the missing person report was initially filed in 2012. Emma had her 1993 Mazda MPV van towed to the parking lot of the Chateau Victoria Hotel. Inside, investigators found most of her belongings, including her passport, laptop, digital camera, library card, and library books that had yet to be returned. It's unlikely that Emma would have willingly left Victoria without her passport or the equipment she used for her photography, her camera, and laptop. But this leaves the unanswered question, why did she want to go to the airport? Was it to meet her mother upon arrival or another sign of mental instability? The prepaid cell phone that was purchased on the day of her disappearance has never been located or activated. A week after Emma was last seen, her $200 prepaid credit card was flagged for use at a gas station 12 kilometers outside of downtown Victoria. The man using the card to purchase cigarettes claimed he found the card on the side of the road and has been ruled out as a potential suspect by police. He has since contacted Shelley Filipov, explaining he suffers from alcoholism and that his use of the card was not done with a sober mind. In 2014, 115 kilometers north of Victoria, a man entered a store in the Gastown neighborhood of Vancouver, claiming that Emma was his girlfriend. With one of Emma's missing person posters torn down and crumpled up in his hand, the unknown man stated that Emma hated her family and wanted to be left alone. This individual has become known as Green Shirt Guy. At the time of this video's publication, he has yet to be identified. He has several tattoos on his arms and walks with a limp. The last publicly known update came in 2018. A man only identified as William came forward claiming that on the morning of November 29th, Emma flagged him down for a ride approximately 15 kilometers west of Victoria near Colwood as he drove to work. If William's account is accurate, this would move the last known sighting of Emma to the morning after she had spoken with police. William is certain that his passenger was indeed Emma Philippoff who was calm while inside his car. He went on to state that Emma looked to be okay. However, his intuition told him she was worried about something. William also specified that Emma requested to be dropped off near a friend's home in which William obliged, dropping her off at a nearby intersection. The man only identified as William said that his reluctance to come forward sooner was due to his apprehension of becoming involved in the investigation. Over the years, hundreds of hours have been dedicated to locating Emma. Investigators, volunteer search parties, divers, and search dogs have yet to provide any substantial leads. What was Emma's fate on the night of November 28, 2012? Did her mental distress leave her vulnerable to somebody with unimaginable intentions? Did she choose to seek a private life away from everything and everyone she has ever known? Did she venture too far into the wilderness somewhere and succumb to exposure? Or did she choose to leave our world behind and take her own life? At the time of this video, Emma would be 35 years old. She's five foot five and weighs 90 to 110 pounds. She has brown eyes and long brown blonde hair. She has a tanned complexion and no known tattoos. Emma has no known history of drug or alcohol abuse. She is a vegan and has struggled with an eating disorder in the past. Her appearance has varied throughout her life, with her mother even describing her as a chameleon. If you have any information that may assist in this investigation, 
please contact the Victoria Police Department's non-emergency line at 250-995-7654 or call your local police. Tips can also be provided anonymously via Crime Stoppers at 800-222-8477. Shelly Filipoff has dedicated her life to finding her daughter. Over the years, she has spent many months on Canada's west coast in search of Emma. She has spent her life savings in hopes that one day she can see her daughter again. Do you have any information that can help find Emma Filipoff? Thank you for watching our first video. Please help us grow by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. Hit the bell to receive notifications for future uploads.